delighted to see you all here and welcome you all to the University of Bristol and the launch of the Elizabeth Blackwell Institute for Health Research. We're here today to open the Elizabeth Blackwell Institute, welcome the family over from uh, America, the descendants of Elizabeth Blackwell, uh, because we're naming the Institute after a, a real pioneer in uh, public health um, in the 18th century. Uh, but we were also here today to announce a new project that's starting off in the University of Bristol, which is called the Sphere Project. Uh, and this is all about a very pioneering project, which is uh, putting sensing systems into people's homes to keep them healthy. It's a very powerful example of what the Elizabeth Blackwell Institute has been set up to do, which is getting people in very different disciplines to work together to really deliver a difference for people's health. And I think that's what Elizabeth Blackwell would have wanted back in the 1800s. In America, she's extremely well known. Many people will tell you they know her story. Remarkably, in Bristol, it couldn't be further from the truth. She really is a, a, a local unsung hero, and we plan to change that, not just in Bristol, but in the UK. Elizabeth and her fellow founder members adopted the motto, prevention is better than cure. And nearly 150 years later, it is a phrase that is regularly used by medical professionals and the general public alike. Fun was to be in rather short supply over the next two years, as she worked tirelessly to build up this dispensary into what became the very successful New York Infirmary for Women and Children. We're deeply grateful to the University of Bristol for not only bestowing this great honor on Elizabeth, but also for giving us an opportunity to visit Bristol. The project I'm leading at the university, which is called uh, Sphere, is all about how we can deploy networks of sensors in people's homes to monitor aspects of their healthy and unhealthy behaviours and to feed the results of those behaviours back to the people so that they can be changed. As a society, we are living longer than ever before. In fact, of the children who are born in Bristol today, we can say with reasonable confidence that in the century they will be celebrating their 100th birthday. Well, if someone is discharged from hospital to the home and we want to know how their recovery is proceeding, monitoring their use of electricity and water, in other words, are they cooking, are they eating, are they being hydrated, that tells you a huge amount about the recovery that they're making. And critically, that piece of information costs us nothing to get. That's basically available for free. Medical and clinical schools here in Bristol are beginning to understand is the the way in which uh, mental health problems are characterised by changes in behaviour. Once we've begun to detect these issues and once, we, um, once, once they've been identified, technology can play a really important role in making these treatments more widely accessible. Diabetes is a growing problem for us in the UK as a result of increasing levels of obesity and lower levels of physical activity. Hypoglycemia is more likely to come on at night and when it comes on it can cause confusion and people can feel a little disorientated. So perhaps using the technologies that Ian has described, we could pick up some of the early signs of hypoglycemia, like people become a little bit shaky and a little bit more sweaty. And those could be picked up, an alarm could sound, the patient could perhaps access some food or a sugary drink, or even the emergency services could be notified if things are really serious. It's a vision of personalised healthcare, healthcare that's tailored very, very specifically to individuals' daily needs. This particular project that, as people have been um, raving about across different universities, with doctors, with clinicians, with companies, with patients, and with community groups. I, I think it's a joy that so many different disciplines are being brought together. I think it's even more of a joy that companies, the public, doctors are all being involved right from the start. And that the project has got patients, members of the public, starting to advise on it right from the beginning is just inspiring. One of the most fascinating things I've looked at really is we're asked if we can just look at these um, early research, and it's very early, 
very formative, um, and then give our discuss it between us, and then give our points of view and input into it. And they listen, which is great. Researchers are looking to the public and patients to help in the development of some of the research that they're doing. I think in the beginning it was a wee bit scary. <laughs> the whole idea of video cameras perhaps coming into the house um, or coming into the homes. But the whole idea of this when it was explained more, it is the way we are going to go. We have to move with the technology that we have. So I have decided that when it is en route, I'm getting my next leg done and I'm having a camera. <laughs> I'm really excited to be part of a project that is going to change the future of the way that we look at healthcare, back to the original ideas of the way Elizabeth saw things. Well, I think it is a very timely institute. Oh, it's fascinating. This is an um, incredible opportunity um, uh, to change the way um, patients are looked after. I could see how it could be very helpful in monitoring my daily life and experience. I felt today was a very good advert for Bristol and what Bristol stands for, which is interdisciplinary research and cutting edge work. I think the approach, which is kind of using sensory and smart approaches to maintaining independence of elderly people in society is going to be really important going forward. The Institute, having the public and patients involved from the start is going to really help maximise the benefits of research. I think it was very interesting because I am a clinician too, but I work with new technologies and I think it's the future. We are starting a meaningful two-way dialogue with the people from Bristol and this event is the starting point. I think it's really exciting what the Research um, Institute is going to do in terms of um, sort of cross-disciplinary research. Um, and I think that there's all sorts of possibilities that will come out of this. I think it's pioneering in the same way that Elizabeth Blackwell pioneered. like you, Jane, holding hands with Hannah and Lucy to declare open the Elizabeth Blackwell Institute.